welcome to Devil's Advocate. I'm Ben. As always, I'm joined by Sean. Hello. And today we're going to talk, well, we're going to tackle a, what I thought would be a fairly straightforward thing. Yeah, I think we were going for simple, weren't we? We were a bit off more than we could chew. Yeah, <laughs> especially me. Yeah. It's not you, you don't usually pick the philo- uh, philosophical sort of uh, picks, do you? No, and today we're going to try and discuss free will. Yeah, which that is down. probably one of the biggest ones since Does God Exist? No. No. <laughs> Like, I don't think so. Yeah, I doubt it. <laughs> if, it is, if it is, then he needs to get his ass down here and sort shit out. You're like, ah, oh, shit, I've been bad mouthing this guy for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah but at that point, I'm a believer. Yeah. I'll just repent and I'll be fine. Yeah. That only works if you're a Catholic, though, doesn't it? All the others, you kind of. Well, I'll convert to Catholicism. <laughs> He's like, sorry, that's the wrong one. We were looking for Mormonism. Mm. <laughs> Try again. Damn. Down to hell you go. No, you know? Well, I was pretty good here anyway. Yeah. At least you get a tan. Yeah. Hey, Sam. <laughs> hey, Ben. Hey, Ben. <laughs> Don't I already have your soul? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I sold it back in the day for a four-pack of lard and a bag of crisps. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, worth it. <laughs> 26 years. You, know, you can have whatever you want. You sure? You sure that's all you want? I want more beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, so free will. Free will. Right. Um, so there's already where, sort of... Where do you sit at the minute? With this, yeah. Well, before we delve into, before we it, delve anything, just very briefly, where do you sit? Um, well, I feel like we need to kind of explain, yeah. explain the um, sort of philosophical debate, sort of what, what, well, what most philosophers believe in the sort of one, one argument or the other. But um, to kind of break down what I think right now is, I kind of feel like um, we can, we can. I feel like everybody has a destiny, but I feel like you can you can find that destiny yourself sort of thing. Like everyone has like the perfect, perfect life that they can achieve, but yeah. they've got to find it, whatever that is. It's almost like they, they can, they know what they love and they know how they can find that and get to it and then have that perfect life. It's just, they know that that road's going to be very difficult. So it's just getting to that perfect life. So there's almost like there's multiple versions of you that you can kind of be. And it's, whether or not you want to work towards that kind of thing. That kind of takes us into like a multiverse scenario. Yeah, 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 basically. Oh, man. I go for... Well, this is kind of what this is like, isn't yeah. it? Kind of the whole butterfly effect is very much on this sort of thing, is if um, destiny is predetermined, but there's multiple destinies. To, if you had free will and you also destiny existed, then it would be the butterfly effect, wouldn't it? Because you'd be yeah. like, well, my destiny is to be great, but how will I be great? depending on what I do tomorrow or what I do today. And it's it, that's how it's like the butterfly effect. Like you could be like a really talented athlete and you'd be like, well, do I take up football or do I take up basketball? So it's like, do you become a professional basketball player? Or do you become a professional football player? And it's kind of like you have to take that and it can change. It. You're, you're still going to be kind of great in what you wanted to do, but it's kind of changed sort of your destiny slightly. That was a ghost. Oh, God damn, not again. If people heard that bang, that was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Something <laughs> fell in the house on the other side of the room and nobody moved it. So it's a ghost. It's a ghost. Oh, clearly. Ben was trying to summon devils earlier. <laughs> <laughs> not not one devil. Not the devil. Just loads of devils. Yeah, there's a pentagram under the rug. Yeah. Just on the floor in blood, didn't you yeah. notice? <laughs> he was like, please, please be... Uh, what, what are the sex demons called? Succubuses. Yeah, please be succubuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. where, where are you kind of standing? Um... I go with life is like a box, box, of, chocolate. box of chocolates. <laughs> no, I think it's like a choose your own adventure book. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a, you. So you make a decision. You go one way, and you know, you get by a car. Yeah. You make a decision. You you five and you oh shit yeah I've got to do that before I go at the house. You're five minutes late. You don't get by the car. Yeah. It's just timing. Yeah. <laughs> And that's why I, I, I go for the choose your own adventure book sort of theory. So you think that there there is complete free will then? No, I think that to a point we, we freely make the decisions, but the destinations can only lead to certain situations. Yeah, but when, can you argue then the sort of? I mean, we 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 did decide we were going to talk about the religious as, aspect of it, but don't you think then that kind of requires some sort of outward sort of force blocking you? Well, no, cause external you, force no no i don't think so no no because i go okay so all right i'm i'm at this crossroads here so i'm just drawing on the pad for sean to see there's a y yeah and over here it says uh beer mm-hmm. on the left and on the le- on the right it says no beer yeah all right so i go okay i think i'll have a beer tonight yeah so i then go up there and i get another fork in the yeah. road yeah and that says like how many yeah 
should I get drunk? Yeah. And choose, then again, choosing on that, oh, it's 8 o'clock tomorrow and you're rough as fuck. Yeah. You know, hangover, yeah. no hangover. But These are things that the situations are only determined by the choices I make. So you do believe in complete free will then? But the, the problem with that, though, is did you make did you make them or were they already pre predetermined? Uh, but you just haven't seen those decisions yet. Like you've not you've not lived through those decisions, but they were already predetermined. Well, this, those situations can only come about from the decision I made to have beer or not. <laughs> can't they? Right. So what we'll do, what we'll do, that that kind of even though you said free, it sounds like you're leaning to free will. It's kind of like you've explained determinism. <laughs> I'd say in the middle. Yeah, it's in between the, the two, I think. Um, right. So what we'll do yeah. is we'll talk about the religious aspect first. Okay. So basically, because we like to do that with the philosophy stuff, don't we? Because you being atheist and me being agnostic, we kind of just run through the religious side. And then we'll go, right, right, we're going to sweep that completely under yeah. the table. 2,000 years of human yeah. history under yeah. the table. Because we're just gonna, we don't believe in it, most of it. So we're just going to just... <laughs> Thing, use the sort of science philosophy, <laughs> if that makes sense. So with the the sort of Christian one we'll go with, because that's the one we're, we're most familiar with. Yeah, I don't know how it works with the rest of them, yeah. in all fairness. So uh, free, yeah, I don't really know either. So free will's kind of like uh, God gifted us free will, and then Satan kind of helped manipulate that into making evil choices. But the capability for evil is always there, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you know, you could... Start, you know, so stuff like murder, rape, theft, that's all evil stuff, and yeah. you're making a conscious decision to do that. But then again, the psychological factors you could put in that. Yeah. Um, I think Satan was the first proponent of free will. Yeah. Like, fuck you, God. I'm uh, I'm going to start my own kingdom with blackjack and hookers and call it hell. Yeah. It's better to rule better to rule there than to serve you. Yeah. But he gave, but God gave humans free will before Satan even left. Yes, but did we know how to use it? God was, remember, God's still trotting around at this point. Well, yeah, because if you think about the whole Eden, Eden and all, all that, he's like, well, there's an apple. Don't touch the apple, but it's there. <laughs> and then they touched the apple, didn't they? Well, they ate the, she ate the apple. Yeah, though. she ate the apple. So with the, with the devil's kind of eat the apple, you know you want to. I'm going to sneeze. You're going to sneeze? I think I am. He's not going to sneeze. It's brewing. He's not going to sneeze. <laughs> no, it's okay yeah. for a minute. It'll come out later. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe sex date. No. Uh, yeah, yeah so, my sex tape is coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I um, I think that um, if you go with the religious aspects of it, God get gifted free will so that humans could make choices. But I kind of think that's a bit uh, sadistic, really, because he's kind of gone right now. Any shit that happens in this world, I'm absolved of. Yeah, it's like a get out of jail free card. It's the ultimate catch twenty two. Yeah, it's like well. That guy just killed 30 people. Oh, yeah, well, he's got free will. It's not on me. Yeah, I didn't tell him to do that. <laughs> yeah. So not that's my why, plan for him. So that's why they, people started blaming the devil. It's like uh, if you watch the, the TV show Lucifer, it's a great show. The devil's like, I don't actually make you guys do evil. I punish you for it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't make you guys do anything. You just blame me for it. Yeah. It's like God made, gave you the choice to be evil. <laughs> but um, it's Which like the guy. I kind of agree with. Yeah. It's like the get out of jail free card for God, though, isn't it? Oh, well, I give every living thing um, free will, so it can do what it wants. So if it's if it does evil, it's not on me. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that is pretty much it, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's because a lot of atheists. Sorry, go on. Sorry, sorry. There's, there's, I mean, Satan for me is like you know he's like the original free thinker, isn't he? Yeah, he's saying, hey, kids, you can do what you want. Don't, yeah. You don't have to bend the knee, you know. You can be your own god. He did also kind of want to subjugate humans, didn't he? Did he, though? I think he wanted to either subjugate us or wipe us out. Did he, though? I think he did. Oh, right. Well, either <laughs> so way. He didn't want to bow to us, did he? He wanted to kind of... He's like, we're angels, we're superior, why should we bow? He's like, And then it went from there to kind of wanting to destroy us, essentially. Yeah, but he liked banging our women too much, I think. That's true. All the De demons do. Definitely, the the, in the Lucifer show, he definitely does. Well, he's, I think he's... I was thinking with that show, Brief Tangent. Yeah, go on. Do you think the devil like, in his human form in that show, Lucifer, is yeah. fertile or not? Yeah, probably. Why? Well, he's going to have a lot of kids trotting around. Yeah. Because he ain't wearing no contraception, is he? I think because he's deity level, he can control when he's fertile and when he's not. Interesting. I don't think... Then again, I don't think that angels could... Ha I think that angels can only have children if kind of God lets them. I don't know, but how do you explain like, the, the Bible stories of like, the Nephilim, where the, the angels coming down and mating with human females and having offspring, which were like half, half angel, half man? Yeah, but don't they uh, usually try and get rid of them? 
because yeah. of how powerful they are. Yeah. So I think that's kind of like some of the sort of powerful angels. Yeah, I mean, if, if these guys are all really powerful and stuff, he, he can't be in control of all of them at the same time, surely. I mean, sometimes they're going to be like, uh, they're, they're going to be banging, if they're banging enough women, I'd imagine they're going to be like, oh shit, we let one through. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's like, right, <laughs> all you angels, go wipe it out before it becomes more <laughs> powerful than me and kills me. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, bring on the Nephilim, that's what I say. Well, he always says that humans were his perfect creation, and if that's true, that means we have some sort of untapped potential that we've not seen yet. So I would imagine that Nephilim could unlock that potential, plus the angel powers. You, you being God's probably going to get... Angel powers. Yeah, God's going to probably get pretty nervous, isn't he? He's going to be like, oh, that Nephilim's quite powerful. I don't like that. Well, he's, he's shagging more and more. His power's spreading out to yeah. the human race. Yeah, you don't want a whole race of Nephilim, do you? That's when yeah. things get dangerous. But uh, where were we? Um, <laughs> that's where we were. Um, Satan being the advocate for free, ultimate advocate for free will. Yeah, he, he's the poster boy of it. Yeah, he's the poster boy of it. It's kind of like he said, "Well, you give all the humans free will. Why can't the angels have free? Because the angels don't have free will. They do, do they? actually. Yeah, they, did they? they did have free will, but they. I thought they the had idea do. is that apparently God wants you to worship him rather than be forced to worship him yeah i but, thought the angels didn't get free will and that's why lucifer kind of said well that's not fair why the fuck do they have free will and we don't we've got to do exactly what you say that's a valid point i suppose is so the, um, i think that's why he fought yeah. against him and that's kind of it's kind of like and he wanted to sit on the throne it's a little bit tragic really if you think about it because like he rose against his father we should have just picked religion instead of uh, yeah. free will here but um yeah, it's kind of a tragic story, really, because it's like he rose up against his father. Who, he was his favorite son. Yeah. And he was like, well, dad, all I want is what you've given those guys. Yeah. I just want to be treated as an equal and I just want free will. All of Horus versus the Emperor. And then, his, and then he, in return, his older brother beats the shit out of him with like a holy fucking sword. Yeah. It's yeah, there like, is that. It's like, ah, oh, you couldn't take me just with a fist fight. You had to freaking bring a holy sword into it. A bit mm-hmm. of a bit dramatic, bit over the top. Well, he should have got a sword for himself, shouldn't he? Yeah, but where was he going to get a holy sword from if he fell out with his... He should have went, Dad. <laughs> Can I have a sword? Can I have a sword? Him? Thanks, Dad. Ah! <laughs> stabbed him. Yeah, you know what? He really should have thought the whole rebellion thing Yeah, better. It's, it's kind of like you went, right, just so you know, I'm going to start a rebellion. And he was like, well, well, son, that, that's not on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, then I'm sending you hell. Fuck. <laughs> Can I grab some of my gear before? No, leave. <laughs> no, really? Can't yeah. just grab a sword, maybe? Yeah. Michael's sword's on the side. He's not using it. Just take that with me. Might no. need it in hell. <laughs> no, that's his. Yeah. You have the chance to have one, Lucifer. Yeah. You, never, you never asked. Yeah. <laughs> You uh, kept asking for bitches. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you the bitches. <laughs> yeah. You can't have everything. It's right. probably sexist me to take. It, it is, yeah. Um, right, so let's... So let's go, let's go free will then. Let's look. Yeah, let's wrap it up. So with, yeah. the, with the religious thing, with the free will thing, we, we, we don't believe in that. No. So, well, we, we not, not that we don't believe in free will. We don't believe that it was granted by God because we're not prescribing to the whole idea of God. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And essentially we thought we'd cover it, but we don't, we don't really agree with it because you'd have to be Christian or any other religion. Actually, you should have got Sam on the phone and yeah. you know, phone a friend. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Sam, what, what, what do Muslims believe in? I think it's very <laughs> similar to Christianity, isn't it? A lot. Probably. Yeah. 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 I'll have to ask him. I'll ask him. Yeah. You can always do that. And then uh, I can bring it up in one of the next philosophical Boom. debates. Right, so that's sort of, there's an argument to this, isn't there? Yeah. So let's delve so into that. There's two, well, there's two of a possible third option yeah. when it comes to the arguments of free will. So libertarian free will, nothing to do with the political party. Um, that is the belief that some human actions are freely chosen. Mm-hmm. That leads us to principle of alternate possibilities. Yeah. Um, so this I, is the one where it believes you are completely, you are free will. Yeah. Every choice you make is your own. Yes. So that's what you'd like to think. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. You hope so. Um, an action is free only if the person doing the thing could have done otherwise. Yeah. Which I suppose, yeah, okay. So that goes back to what you said with this kind of mini map you drew me. It's like you made that choice, so that that's free will. That to this possibility, Yeah. which then takes me to another possibility. So yeah. if I'd like, I had a choice in the shop. Yeah. For example, I could have bought 10 beers, Yeah. right? I could have bought uh, eight, yeah. six, sorry, for a pound less. Yeah. Now, anyone else would have gone, that's great, I'll, uh, I'll have the 10. Yeah. No, but because I knew yeah. that in my path here, it would have gone, does Ben drink all 10? Yeah. Does he not? Yeah. I knew that I would drink all 10. And you've got work, so you and chose I've got, not to. I've got work in the morning. Yeah. 
So yeah. I chose not to. So that leads me to the area I bought six. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem is, and we'll explain pre uh, the determined one in a minute, is it's determined that you're going to work, so it's determined that you would have never picked the 10. <laughs> ah, but... You have picked the 10 in the past. I have picked the 10 in the past. Yeah. It's only because I have uh, counselor's duties in the morning. Yeah. If I just had work, I'd have probably drank the 10. <laughs> Let's hope work doesn't hear you doing this. I don't care. I think they do fire me. I'm not drunk at work. That's true. That's true. Yes. Right. So, is there more to that then? So, see, there's uh, quite a lot of notes. Yes. <laughs> Event causation. Yeah. That then leads us to this, which is what I was trying to explain. With yeah. The, uh, yeah. Things. So, no physical act can occur without having been caused by a previous event. Yeah. Um, which you chose yourself. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is a being is propelled by a, a mind which can start a whole chain of uh, events that wasn't caused by anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. That's that's. So we have free will. Yeah. Everything you do has a knock on effect and leads you to other situations. Yeah. 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 Uh, then you've got hard determinism. This is the belief that all events are caused by past events such that nothing other than what does occur could occur. Mm -hmm. So this is saying there's only so many options of what's going to happen today. Yeah. Chances are it's going to be this. Yeah. And in, in, in a way, let's say, so like Saturday comes, yeah. you've been at work all week, you've got Saturday afternoon off. Yeah. And you go, hmm, I think I'll go to the shops. Yeah. So you already put that decision in your head and it becomes like, Saturday afternoon, go to the shops. Yeah. People ask you what you're doing. Oh, I'm going to the shop Saturday afternoon. So, so you're, oh, you've already made that choice. So therefore, when Saturday comes, yeah, you go in whether you like it or not. So it's almost like saying free will in this this argument. Free will does exist. It's just that most animals are creatures of habit. So it would seem like it's predetermined because they would just do the similar stuff because yeah. that's what they like to do because it's it's just habit. It's like uh, we get up in the morning at the same sort of times because we like to. So if you, I don't like to get up. No, if it's like a, okay, so if you're you're not an early riser, so if it's like a Saturday and you don't have work because you don't work weekends, you'd sleep in because and you do that every Saturday because that's yeah. what you like to do. So it's not because it's predetermined; it's because you've made that conscious choice. And that, I have nothing else in my life going on. Yeah, but that's exactly that's essentially what you're saying, isn't I it? Just podcast and that's it. <laughs> you're like that's my life. That's it. Podcast, drink beer, masturbate, masturbate. That's pretty much it. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's what you're saying, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to work. And go to work. Yeah. Begrudgingly. <laughs> Begrudgingly go to work. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you're saying, though, isn't it? Yeah? Yes. Is it, you've made that choice. It just seems like it's predetermined because we're creatures of habit. We, we choose. Yeah. Like, you, ch you choose to buy beer because you like drinking beer. You don't drink. You don't drink a lot else. You do drink other stuff, but you usually... do, yes, listeners, I do drink other stuff apart from beer. Yeah, it's just beer is your preference. So you, you, if you go to a shop, you're likely to buy beer because of a habit, not because it's predetermined yes, that's destiny. Because of, because of my functional alcoholism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is that, that, that kind of the whole argument, or is there more to that? Um, I do, do. Trying to make it as easy to understand because it's kind yeah. of like we're trying to understand it and we're trying to unpack it and people will probably be even more confused than we are about it. This is true. Now, a guy called Baron Doback, yeah. who was a philosopher back in the day, back in the wig days. The wig days. You know when everyone wore a wig? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so 1700s-ish. Yeah. I don't know if I'd have gone for the wig look. No? No, I mean, I suppose there's a certain... It would have been popular back then, though. It would, but then again, so were like frilly cuffs. Yeah. You know, I don't think I've gone for frilly cuffs either. Yeah, because that's that's because you like sort of modern day clothes. But back then, you probably would have had the frilliest of cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been a dandy. You would have been a dandy. Yeah. <laughs> Going along waving a handkerchief. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I'd have been. I'd have probably had a red coat on. We we always like to think that um, because we live in today's time and society that we wouldn't follow sort of cultural norms of the time, like with the whole sort of seventies or the hippie stuff where everyone. I've done that. Yeah, but um, I do my teens doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, like when I look at stuff like that, I'm like, God, what were they wearing? I would have never wore that, but I would have. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have minded the women in miniskirts and and, and bikini. Tops. No, but the guys wearing those really horrible brown trousers and or, or they were wearing like uh, sandals, sandals or the full on what's the farmer thing that they wear? Dungarees. Dungarees. And you're like, God, I can't believe a grown man's wearing that, but 
I would have, wouldn't I? Because it's what everyone wore back then. Yeah, yeah so oh, I would have just... People fit in, don't they? They fit into social norms. So we like to think we wouldn't wear the frilly shit, but we would. <laughs> we would. We'd be wearing the biggest, finest wins in all the <laughs> land. I'd have, I'd have probably been like um, a red coat officer, so I'd have had my gold epaulets and yeah. smartly coat and my little bicorn hat. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> With a wig on top. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd have accepted my baldness. Would you? <laughs> Apart from unless it was cold, in which case I might put a wig on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd only wear the wig when it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, it's chilly. I don't have any hats. Let's just put this wig on. <laughs> yeah, well, I would imagine they would have been very itchy. Yeah. And yeah. flea infested. Yeah, probably. You're right, probably. Uh, so, Baron. Yeah. Uh, old Dollback. Dolback, yeah. Uh, he said that everything is the inevitable res- result of what came, including everything that we do. Yeah. So is this still the same theory, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is what his theory on it was. Yeah. Everything is going to happen anyway. Yeah. I suppose it's just... Isn't he somewhat... I thought he sat more in the middle. Well, no, no, no. That's reductionism, which is the third view. But he, yeah. I think he's going for this. He's saying it's all fucking predetermined. Yeah. You just your choice is going to lead you to certain paths anyway. Yeah, yeah. So there's no free will really because you're going to do a certain thing, meant things in one day, and you're just because all it's changing is the order. Oh, okay. I yeah. guess. Yeah. Isn't it? So it's like a it's like a a structured liber, libertarianism, then, yeah, like, sort of thing. And that leads us on to reductionism, yeah, which is a bit of a mix of the two. Yeah. This is the view. I that... thought that was um. Con... Oh, okay, carry on. Yeah. I thought it was that continue something, continuism or something like that. Continuism. Was that? Is that... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the view that all parts of the world and of our own experience can be traced to one singular thing, and that would be the decision you make at the start. Yeah. So, as in my little map. Yeah. There. That brings you up into a fork in the road. Yeah. And I'm always going to go along. I suppose I make that original choice and then that leads me down a predetermined path. Yeah. yeah. But that, is that free will or is that my own mental state? Don't know. Because if I go, hmm, I've got 10 cans. Yeah. Mm, but I have got to get up early tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be all right. Yeah. Even though I know I won't. Yeah. Like, well, you know what, fuck it. And then it's two in the morning and I'm going to bed. Yeah. Then that's a, that's my own choice to do that. Hmm. But it's also my own, well, I'm not leaving beer in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> my own pride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, doesn't uh, free will can't exist without our own developed behaviour. Yeah. Our, 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 I'm sorry, actually, our own free will can only exist within our own developed behaviour. Yeah. Is my theory at the moment. Yeah. So, for example, tomorrow you're going to go to work and you're going to work out when you've got a couple of hours spare. Yeah. Now, you you think, oh, I'll, I'll work out now. But yeah. you're always going to work out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what you do. It's a habit. Yeah. It's your mental discipline. Yeah. So it's like free will, but it's already determined because we make those decisions preemptively yeah. sort of thing. That's it. Yeah. That's where I'm going. Yeah. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm going with. So that, is that the full explanation of free will? Then is it? That's all the, the three types of free. And will. you're sitting on the you the free will one. I am sitting on the uh, on reductionism. Yeah, but that uh, still falls under free will. Yeah, yeah. It's like a strict version of free will. That's right. Yeah. 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 It's basically it's like my little map. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah. this is. I'm gonna either I'm gonna drink this beer, yeah. and I'm gonna get smashed and go to bed late and wake up feeling terrible, having not slept very well, and then yeah. be a bag of shit tomorrow. Or I can be yeah. responsible, have a few beers, and not have the hangover and perform at or near expectations. Yeah, yeah. This this is um this is so this is still free will. It's just kind of it feels like there's a structure to it all because we are. Literally, even though we're intricate thinkers, we still have habits. We still have things we have to do within our lives. So it, it kind of limits our choices. So I can't exactly go um, to Vegas right now. Well, you could. Well, because of COVID, I can't, can I really? Because I don't know, to be honest. Maybe you could. Let's, let's assume there wasn't a, co- a pandemic. Of. Yeah, then I could. But what I'm saying is I can't. That that choice has been made, made, so I can't do it. So that limits my choices sort of thing. Yeah. In fact, yeah. I don't think you can. There was a lady i know from work was going to go to gran canaria uh, i don't think can, you can travel at the moment, uh, on the 21st of december and yeah. it was cancelled yeah i don't um, think you can travel right now because they'd have to quarantine when they came back yeah 
So that that's but kind of the... I think they're on about going to Dubai, which you can still go to. Yeah, it's to. a bit strange, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, that's kind of the argument for free will is you you you've got free will, but there's still parameters because other people make choices. Yeah. So like you can't leave because say the government says so that that limits your free will, but it's still there, sort of thing. So it limits your choices because of there's external factors, there's like other people making decisions alongside yours. Yeah. So that's kind of adds to your argument, I guess. Yeah. So it's like you could not want to go to work so that's a choice but then if you didn't go to work enough times you'd lose your job yeah so, so that's not really a choice then let's say oh let's say i do blag it and i've got the day to myself then well yeah. what am i going to do yeah well, the first thing i'm going to do is go back to sleep because i'm tired yeah so that's a choice but i'm also tired there's a physical yeah um something else is exerting uh, its pressure on my decision yeah i could get up go and be super productive yeah but no because it's monday morning and i hate monday mornings you're tired and yeah. i'm tired I want to go back to sleep. So chances yeah. are I'm going back to sleep. Yeah. 97% chance. But you're saying you still made that choice. So I'm still making that yeah. choice. But my own behavior yeah. is influencing my decision. Yeah. My own personality is influencing my decision. And that's kind of where you're sitting right now. Then. Yeah. Yeah. And that also leads us back to evil. <laughs> yeah. In a way, because I could be a, a twisted, horrible bastard. Yeah. And could blag my way in from work and I've got a a teenage girl tied up in the wardrobe. <laughs> Fucking hell. Right? You went dark and, quickly and I'm gonna, on that. And I'm going to have my fun with my knife collection. <laughs> right? Who knows? Yeah. I, th- that would be my choice then. Yeah. And yeah. that is pervert. So my own personality is influencing yeah. my own decisions at that point. Yeah. So you're kind of arguing that nobody can blame a higher power or anything like that because they're in they're in true if they do something great evil or something it's their choice they yeah. made that choice they can't blame the universe god they can't blame the fact that they were yeah. always going to be killers and i think that's why there is this debate in the yeah. first place well there is isn't there because usually when there's a serial killer like well they were always weird they were always yeah. a bit weird they were killing like dogs as children well, that's and that's it. kind of almost like saying well they were always going to be a killer sort of thing so that's kind of the other argument, isn't it? Well, that's it? the McDonald triad. Do you know what the yeah. triad is? No. It's um, torturing or killing small animals. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, the bed yes, and yes. starting fires. Yeah, yeah. The three things that yeah. lead to a serial You get all three of them. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. And if you combine that with a head injury. Yeah. Um, head injuries make him a lot head more Head injuries, are, and especially yeah. if it's a frontal lobe, yeah. which is your behavior or your yeah. sexual preference. Mm. Uh, like that thing in the in one of the videos we watched. Yeah, where he, there was a yeah. guy who was who never had any anything to do with paedophilic thoughts. Then he started molesting his daughter because he's got a tumor in his brain. Yeah, then he got, then they realized he's like, well, I'm as puzzled by it as you. It's never crossed my mind before. Yeah, I and just couldn't found help out myself. He had a tumor in his brain. Yeah, on the frontal lobe, which affects your decision making and sexual yeah. um, preferences. And they removed that, and he stopped that. Yeah, then he stopped thinking anything. Yeah, yeah. So that's an inter- so then you've got a biological factor. So do you have free will if, let's say, you do have a tumor in your brain? You think, hmm, I'm gonna go and kill a prostitute today. Yeah. So it's almost like it, when it's gonna lead to the next one, the, the, the determinism or whatever it is, is those sort of sort of strange behaviors start as like a can start from like a child. So is it predetermined that they were always going to be a killer sort of thing? That's it. That's kind of the argument for the other one. So your idea is interesting. I like it. But uh, the guy did say on the video, it's the least likely to be the right one, didn't he? Well, what he says and what I say are two different things. I mean, yeah, but that's what most, philo- yeah, but- most philosophers agree. It's the least likely. Yeah, but who listens to them? <laughs> you know, poncing around with their fucking black turtleneck sweaters on, telling everyone about the futility of existence, yeah. smoking a pipe, wearing a beret. What? Right? What's wrong with smoking a pipe? Well... When it's a cool pipe, nothing. When it's a cool pipe. But if it's a Sherlock Holmes pipe, nothing. If it's a little black French stubby pipe, why if it's, no. why if it's a bubble pipe? That's acceptable too. That's acceptable too. Yeah. That's you good mean, then. Yeah. So if I get a bubble pipe, you'll be cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's Actually, cool. I should fetch my debate pipe for Mike. You should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need that. We have more debates than you, you and Mike do. Yeah, I just tend to agree with him. Yeah, you need the, you need the pipe, and you'd be like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I do, literally. I'll debate with him, and I'll sit here with my pipe holding like that, and I use it to point, yeah. and it makes me feel great. To make your your your, your opinion valid. Yeah. I, I make pointing more... Pointing to someone with the end of a pipe makes your opinion immediately valid. Yeah, I make more sense with, a, with an aggressive pipe. <laughs> That's it. So, yeah. An aggressive pipe poking or pointing. If I sort of prod <laughs> it into your chest. chest. <laughs> aggressive pipe poking. 
<coughs> prodding a pipe into someone, the end of a pipe into somebody's chest. Yeah. Right, immediately hey, what you adds, do on the weekends is entirely <laughs> Immediately weird. adds conviction to your argument and point and intimidates you at the same time. <laughs> Would you be intimidated if I was just like pointing a pipe end at you? Or yeah, making maybe. my point. Oh, this guy means business. He's got a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he's talking he about. He's, and that's his pipes in, imbue authority. They do, yeah. He's a distinct, distinguished member of society. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, Stephen Fry, yeah. the um, actor, writer, comedian. Yeah. Um, he was voted Pipe Smoker of the Year. Yeah. Right. Because a paparazzi guy took a photo of him once smoking a pipe. And it was the only time he'd ever smoked a pipe. Yeah. Right? It's something to do with he was at an event. Yeah. And they didn't allow, what was it? He didn't. He forgot his cigarettes. He was a smoker. Mm. And he walked out, gone to the thing, forgot his cigarettes. And the only guy that smoked there had a pipe. Yeah. So he offered him the pipe. Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, that's great." So he goes out and he he smokes it. And he's like, "Well, it wasn't great. I prefer my cigarettes. But you know, I need nicotine." And this paparazzi guy took a picture of him, sold the picture. He ended up being named Pipe Smoker of the Year. Yeah. He's like, I've never, the only time in my life I've ever smoked a pipe. Hey, that's an achievement. <laughs> it is. You put that on your CV. Yeah. I might try and aim to be pipe smoke of the year. The year. <laughs> Just walk around by the paparazzi like, ah. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well. I mean, I could be this year's pipe smoker of the year if yeah. you want to take a photo. <laughs> right, so we're getting a little bit confused, aren't we? I'm confused. So we, we had a little break and we talked about it and we got a little bit confused when we were reading the notes. So the first bit is essentially free will, isn't it? It's li- libertarianism, they said. Yeah. So essentially what that is, is what Ben said. When you take, when you make a decision... That decision is yours. If you choose to have a beer, you have a beer. If you choose to have 10 beers, you're making that choice tomorrow to likely have a hangover. Yep. You're making all those choices. The other thing that we were trying to work towards, but we were getting a little bit confused on, is the next arguing point, which is determinism. Yes. So essentially, determinism just means that no matter what choice we think we're making, we're not making it. The outcome is already made for us. Terminator. Yeah, it's determined. So, like, yeah, that's that's a perfect example, actually. I mean, no matter a, how no, many yeah. choices they make in that film to try and stop a, an act from happening, they do change small things in the timeline, but yeah. the the Terminators still always take it's over. It's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. It's predetermined. It's, it's in. It's not the idea, and this is why people don't like it like yourself, because they think that there has to be some sort of storyteller, a writer, like a god that's writing this story. A godhead. Out. Yeah, somebody that's writing the story. Like so, Mr. T. Yeah, so it's like predetermined because somebody wrote it out in a book. But what it actually means is time has already, like we see time as a line, but it's almost like time's a circle. It, it just keeps going round and round. It's already made its choice, and you can't make it because it's already decided. Yeah, if you're going to be a factory worker, yeah, you're, you're going to be. You're always going to be a factory worker. Yeah, or there's it, nothing unless there's nothing else to it. Yeah, so if you go, you know what? I don't want to be a factory worker anymore. I'm going to invent something that everybody needs. You were always going to invent that. That was yeah. always going to happen. You that wasn't free will. You were always going to be the man that invented the new sex machine. <laughs> <laughs> I am the new yeah. sex machine. Look yeah. <laughs> You know what? I want to make a new sex machine. And you looked in the mirror and you're like, I am the sex yeah. machine. Twenty dollars a piece, everybody. <laughs> Just lay on a couch. <laughs> on the street. Yeah. Sir, this is prostitution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. I'm a sex machine. I'm a sex machine. So yeah, this this is so we were getting a little bit confused. So when we talked about um the baron and all that, that's not actually free will. We need to kind of retract that a little bit, don't we? Mm-hmm. So he talks about um it's part of determinism. What does he call it again? Oh, reductionism. Yeah, reductionism is kind of like a form of of determinism. And determinism, all these words are very confusing, but all it basically means is no matter what you choose, it will always lead back to the same like inevitable sort of conclusion. So they, they talk about this all the time when they go, what would you do if you had a time machine? And everyone goes, oh, I'd go back and kill Hitler. That's what loads of people say that. I go back and kill Madonna. Would you? Yeah. Why? I hate her music career. Yeah. I hate her films. You suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to make sure she never becomes famous. Yeah. But um, the argument is, they always say, I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to kill Hitler. And they always say, you can't kill Hitler. And they're like, why can't you kill Hitler? And it's like, because Hitler's always going to be Hitler. He's always going to. There's always going to be a there's Hitler. There's always going to be a Hitler. He's going to survive yeah. somehow. You'll either go back in time, you'll try to kill him, you'll fall and break your neck or something like that. It's always going to happen. Final destination theory. Yeah. You're always going to die. Yeah. It's just 
you might have changed the timeline slightly. Yeah. But it's always going to happen. Yeah. And this is why they always say, there's, there's always, um, with time travel, this is why it's always so confusing. Because it's like, well, if you go back in time to try and change the time, are you really going to change the time? Or are you always going to go back in time and always fail? That's it. Yeah. And this is the same with Terminator, actually. They go back in time to try and change it. So what's his name in the first film? He goes back to try and... Carl Reese. Yeah. And he ends up becoming his father, which means he was yeah. always going to go back in time. Yeah. That was predetermined. But did John Connor know that Kyle Reese was his dad? I don't so know. So therefore, when he meets Kyle Reese as a kid, because yeah. John Connor's a grown man, yeah. he meets Kyle Reese, who's like a young, in his early teens, yeah. takes him under his wing, teaches him stuff that his mom taught him, yeah. for, him for Kyle Reese to pass that on to his mom. Yeah. All right? So he knows Kyle Reese. Yeah. Is his dad? He's like, oh, "What's your name, Carl Reese?" And he's like, "Daddy." Yeah, <laughs> but he's not. But yeah, he's thinking. Oh. Yeah, he knows he's gonna send that kid back one day. Yeah, to fuck his mom and then die and then die, or else he wouldn't exist, or else John wouldn't exist. Yeah, but you could also argue then. So there's no free will there. Yeah, yeah, and you could also argue then, um, like if it's always sort of predetermined that. Even if he didn't know that, he would have done it anyway. Yeah. If he did know that, if he didn't know that. But, yeah, he, he's got to do it. There's no choice, like you said. He, he's got to do it because otherwise he won't exist and he wants to exist. So he's what got he, to. Like he sends another. So let's say if he had free will, yeah. right, he might see Kyle Reese scavenging and go, ah, oh, filthy little fucking thief, and shoot him in the back of the head, not yeah. realising who he was. And then he just starts to disappear. Yeah. No! Or his, <laughs> his facial features just immediately change because he sent, he's, maybe he was black. He gets an app, bro. Yeah, yeah. Maybe Shit. his name's Leroy Connors. Right? <laughs> yeah. Who can say? Yeah. But no. He just sends back Big Delroy. Delroy? <laughs> What's with these names? Why can't they just have a, a normal name? A stereotypical West Midlands Jamaican community names. Are they? Yeah, Leroy Delroy. Is all, if you knew like a bunch of Jamaicans, there was always a Leroy and a Delroy. Have you met a Leroy and a I Delroy? I have, yeah. Have you? Yeah. Okay. I just smoke with them. Okay. Uh, my, my argument is retracted. I know, there's also other guys called John and Dave and Frank and yeah. all that, but yeah. there was always usually, in whenever, in a, a group I was in, there was a Delroy and a Leroy. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not racism. I'm just, quite, just, <laughs> just, just saying I had, I had black friends once. It, it wasn't until you said it's not, and then it, kind of, <laughs> then it sounded I'm shady. Not, I'm not racist, but... <laughs> No, it's usually also a Lenny Henry sketch, Del Delroy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember yeah. that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. it's Lenny Henry saying it, I can say it. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. But why not? <laughs> You're like the token white guy friend. No, there was a few of us. Yeah. Yeah, I, we had this old guy called Dennis who introduced us all. To, like, he was like the king smoker at work. The king smoker. Yeah, he was like, he'd been on it since the 60s. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, what did he say? I, I, I don't even know. But he left years ago. I haven't seen him in donkeys now. But he go like, I wake up uh, on nights. So, you know, he wakes up at 11. He's got a joint in the ashtray next to his bed, rolled by his missus. He goes downstairs. There's another joint downstairs waiting for him. Yeah. And he would then, him and his missus would sit there and skin up all day. And yeah. get high. And he'd Jeez. drive to work. Yeah. Chain smoke like a fucker in breaks. He was literally just bag after bag after bag after bag. Yeah. And then he'd have a joint on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it out. He gave me a lift in the once to join some. I was like, Are you all right? I've yeah. got a function, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, between these two, so with the, just to kind of really get this explanation down. So, with free will, essentially, it means that we just feel like everything, every choice we make is our own. Yeah. So, I've made this choice. I want to do this. There's there's no one else influencing it. Unless somebody directly comes in contact with you and says, you can't have this or you can't do that. Then, obviously... Or well, blocks you from Yeah, it blocks yeah. your free will. But, essentially, you then choose whether or not you, how you react to that block. So, That's you, it. so yeah. that then continues the, the, the next fork in the path. Yeah. And then, obviously, with determinism, just means that... Everything, it's almost like in terms of philosophy, free will is kind of saying, if your life is shit, that's on you. <laughs> if your life is yeah. good, if your that life is good, then it's on you. And then determinism saying, that's your lot in life. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. You were always meant to be... The that. leader of the resistance against the human machine, yeah. against the machine. Yeah, you were always meant to be that. Or you were always meant to be a bin cleaner. <laughs> or you were always meant to be a... Um, Football player, or you always—you were always meant to be whatever you are. I wasn't and, over my blistering pace and finished clinical finishing. And that doesn't even mean, say, job. You were always meant to die at seventy. You were always meant to uh, 
beer was meant to be your favourite drink. You were always meant to um, like blonde women, if that's your preference. Are you just looking at me and, and <laughs> psychoanalyzing? Yeah, me? basically. <laughs> or you were always going to like dogs. Yeah, that was predetermined. But no, yeah. I, I See, that's where I jump off board with that theory. Yeah. Because if it's all predetermined, see, most every f- single event in my life, you're out of control. Had, no, it's had no meaning. Why? Because I haven't learned from it. I'm still going to make the same mistakes because it's going to happen. Yeah. I don't like beer because, you know, I had it and went, oh, that's really nice. I was always, so if my dad was a whiskey drinker, yeah. surely I would have ended up drinking whiskey. No. No, because but in this scenario, yeah. this pre, in this determinism, yeah. no, I'm going to have beer regardless. Yeah. But Det- that takes out social factors. Determinism, yeah, exactly. But you're kind of almost arguing determinism because determinism is not saying that you will pick up and cre- you become a creature of habit based on like like free will based on the, your environmental factors. It's saying that you will become the person you are because it's already written in stone, it's already written in time. So you, it's not saying you'll like whiskey because your dad likes whiskey. It's saying you will like beer because you're gonna like beer. You don't have a choice. You can't suddenly say I'm never gonna like beer ever again because it's predetermined that you'll always like beer. That's what determinism is. It's saying that you you don't know you don't. It's 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 like saying that humans are arrogant and they think that they can choose but they can't choose it's going yeah. to happen this way that's it maybe that's the we're greatest. the only sort of species that thinks that we are above sort of the natural order of things yeah. but are we really i mean if you get if you fall into a zoo enclosure and there's a lion what's going to happen i'm going to punch that lion you're going to try and punch <laughs> the lion they're probably going to tear your arm off but no, i don't want to get him in the in my sharpshooter yeah <laughs> But it's like that is its instinct and yeah. it has that instinct because it's determined it's been determined since the beginning of time and will be until lions are extinct or whatever. Or evolved they, they into will, a race of lion people. Lion people. They, yeah, but they, you could argue that that's determined as well. It's determined. We just the problem with determinism and why people like yourself don't like it is it's not in the now, it's in the future. It's your existence is predetermined and we don't like that because we can't see it. But I'm a product of environmental, social and genetic factors. Yeah. Right, everything I've done in my life, yeah, uh, has come through. You know, my 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 parents, for example, their their um their way of disciplining me, their way of talking, their way, of, yeah, things like that have influenced who I am, my personality, yeah, my very essence of me, yeah. So to find so, so that would mean that they were meant to get together and have me yeah. to create this being that is me with yeah. this this path set set up on this path, yeah, but I. I can't be right, can it? I'm responsible well, for my own actions. Maybe this is the greatest trick that God ever pulled. It gives the illusion of free will, but it all is fucking yeah. Well, completely see, this, this is the, this is the thing though. Most philosophers believe in determinism because they think that it, in order for you to be able to prove free will, it would have to be predetermined. <laughs> So then determinism is real. So that's, then you can't prove free will. That's that's got to be a bit of a straw, man. Isn't it? But you can't determine free will because if you do, that's determined that you'll do it. That's what the guy that was reading the, the philosophy stuff to us said in the video. He said that it, it's pretty much that in all, it, it feels like we have free will. They, the best argument for free will is it feels like we're free, therefore we are. That's the best argument. Is that it. the definition of freedom, feeling like you're free? Yeah. But, well, no, that's kind of what they say for free will is we feel like we're free. It feels like oh, I made this choice. So then that's why I made that choice. And that's it. No. It feels that way. It feels deep within us that that is what we've done. And that's that's why we think it's true. We want to believe that. We want to believe that we made that choice. Nobody else made me make that choice. But determinism is not saying that somebody else made that choice for you. It's just saying you don't get to choose because you, it's already chosen for you. Nobody's chose it for you, but you, you've, you're you on a linear sort of timeline that can't be changed. Well, that sucks. So you could say, tomorrow I'm going to get up, I'm going to start training, I'm going to get super fit. And you do that, but it was always it was always written that was what you were going to do. So but, you, that, but that sucks. It does, Because it yeah. takes away everything. Yeah. And it's almost like the, the universe is that... It's like looking at the universe like it's a clock and we're just kind of tiny little clogs in that intricate clock. We think we can control how fast we spin, but we don't because the universe all... It's almost like we must think that we're more powerful mentally and physically than the universe and we can control it and we can change it because every time you'd make a free will choice, you would have... It's like a butterfly effect that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So we would feel like we can, we are essentially changing the universe 
when that's not happening, we're just cogs in that universe and it's already made up its mind. It's not conscious, but everything will go the way it needs to go until the end, until the universe stops. So it's it's just like it's just, it's like a movie that's already been made and we've just we've just not watched it yet. And by, by that playing you in the movie of your life. <laughs> um Jason Momoa. Oh fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if we look similar. <laughs> what? Who told you that? Yeah, yeah I'm, more, I'm more of a Hugh Jackman, to be fair. Who told you that? Everyone. Really? Yeah, they're like, guys, you look like Wolverine. Did, did they all have fucking Labradors and white sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Who's playing you, then? <laughs> John Candy. Who's that? You don't know who John Candy no. is? Who's that? Oh, man. Is he like an actor I from, like... I think he's dead, actually. I was going to say, is he like an actor from the 80s? Yeah. yeah all that he, was in, he was in Uncle Buck. He was in the Flintstones movie as Fred. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. He, oh, that was John Goodman. Ah, I get okay. confused with the two. John Candy was Uncle Buck. Yeah. Probably his best movie. John Goodman, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Um, but he's dead. How's he going <laughs> to... Yeah. From the true. grave. John Goodman's not dead, though. He could play me, maybe. The guy who's Fred Brian. Prince, yeah, Brian Dennehy. Yeah. Uh, Dan Aykroyd would be nice. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, where, where was I? I got told I looked like Dan Aykroyd when, did I, was, you really? when I was a teenager. Yeah. yeah. Did you take that as a compliment? Yeah. Uh, well, he's a Ghostbuster, isn't he, son? What did he look like back then? Well, he's in Ghostbusters. Is that was that what he looked like when when you said? Well, that? obviously, I mean, I had a bit more hair than him because he was like in his late thirties when he did that film. I, I can't think. Picture but... him right now. Which Ghostbuster is he? He's Ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. You need to watch Ghostbusters later. Yeah. I've got it upstairs. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> that feel good movie, you know that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Right. So where was I? Um... Yeah, so determinism basically is saying that it's it's just everyone's story is pre-written. Basically, we can't diverge from the universe. That we, sucks. Oh yeah, it does. It does sound sucky. And then then it goes on to the third one, which I think is what you were trying to branch to earlier before we had the break. Which is is it called continuism or something yeah. like that? It's it's essentially where it's kind of a blend of the two. And the guy explained it really well. It's like he's still saying that most philosophers agree that determinism is the most likely outcome. I don't know about that, man. Well, you're a philosopher yourself. You're thinking about it, so you don't have to agree. You can be a libertarian. I'm going to go and slap those bitches up. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. You're, you're a free thinker. You're thinking about it. You can bet, dis- you're can welcome bet, to disagree. I bet I'm harder than all of them philosophers. Just take them all <laughs> off. I'm right. Come here, you fuckers. <laughs> You want to see determinism? Smack! Yeah. Always determined I was going to do that. <laughs> They're like, we were right then. You're like, damn! <laughs> <laughs> no, because now I'm changing it up. You stamp on one of the balls. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you were always going to do that too. You're like, damn! <laughs> 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 prove it you damn nerds <laughs> yeah so um, and then the third one is basically it's like a it's, it, he explains it really well he's saying determinism is basically uh, you stood at a diving board and then some force pushes you off and you right. fall into so whether that is you jump yourself yeah and then continuous, or someone kicks yeah. you off and then continuism is basically it's like soft determinism so it's saying you at the, you're at the diving board and you don't get pushed off you jump off but okay. you had to go off. You didn't have that choice. You you had to, but you chose when. You chose to jump off. So this is where it's a, sort of the sweet spot. So it's like you've got free will, but you're still on that story. You're still on that road. You're st- so what I, so I'm a soft determinist then, because I, I say it's like a choose-your-own-adventure story. Yeah, so... so it's like, oh, do I kiss this girl? Yes. Yeah. Jump to page 82. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm dating her. Yeah. And then, oh, but this other girl really likes you. Maybe you should sleep with her. Yes, go to page forty-six. Yeah. Oh, now your girlfriend's found out. Really, when you when you think about it, when you were talking about um, Terminator and saying that was determinism, it's more like soft determinism, so continuism. Because even though he always becomes the he- hero of the resistance, John Connor, um, Ben Carter, Ben Carter, <laughs> even though he becomes that, depending on each time when they change the timeline in the film, it changes how he gets to that end. Yeah, it changes, and also his age. Yeah. And his age. In some, he's younger. In, in other, yeah, because in the second one, they, they push it back like 10 yeah. years, don't they? But it still happens. So it's, it's almost it's almost like that film is soft determinism because it's saying you're at that diving board, the diving board being you being the saviour of man. You're going to jump off. You're going to be the saviour of man. But it's up to you when you do it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I knew it. I, I just, knew it. I just needed that moral support. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Just needed that one guy. Now I'm going to go get Hench and I'm going to learn how to shoot every single gun known to man. Yeah, and laser guns. And laser guns. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's almost like the soft determinism is arguing 
it is predetermined. The universe has its own sort of, that, I guess that's what I would say I am, because that's kind of what I said at the beginning, is I believe that we kind of have a bit of a destiny. We, we're going to achieve something, but we kind of have to, um, we choose the road we take to get to it. Yeah. All roads. No, uh, no fate, but what we make is just yeah. the thing from Terminator. Yeah. So there's like an end. There's an end. <laughs> an end to it. Well, we all know we're going to die. So that is the ending, basically. Well, that's predetermined. Yeah, that's predetermined. And you can argue that for determinism, there is an end to everything. But it's up to us how we get to that end. It's up to us how successful we are, how rewarding our life is, how how much fun we have. It's up to mm. us on all of those aspects. But we'll always kind of get to the end. And whether you say that's the end of a job, your life, anything. So, yeah. What do you think of those three? Where do you lie? I feel like you want to be full on libertarian. You want to believe that there's no no sort of cosmic power entity. No. Or even just that time itself is in control of you. You want to believe See, you. When I was younger. The god of your own story. Well, I am a god of my own story. I'm a golden god. <laughs> golden yeah. god, oiled up. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, when I was younger, I used to be a determinist. Yeah. Because I used to think that life was like literally like someone putting a videotape or a DVD on. Yeah. And that was your day. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that. It was almost like, this is shit, but I can't change it. This it's, is shit, but I can't change it. Gonna... What's going to happen is what's going to happen. I'm going to miss that bus. I feel by like three school minutes. makes you think that way because mm. it's every day is the same, isn't it, really? Yeah. I'm going to miss the bus by a couple of minutes. Yeah. If I hadn't have. Had to go back upstairs and grab my lighter. I'd have made the bus. No, I'm going to be late. Don't that smoke, kids. Smoking makes you look cool, kids. It hasn't for like 20 years, but carry on. Makes me look cool. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It does. Spoiler, it really doesn't. It does. I'm a fucking swarm, motherfucker. <laughs> um, so if I, if now, as I got older, I think, well, you know what? This is, this is me. This is what. These are my choices. I make my own mistakes as yeah. a man. I, I learn from them and I try and make better chain, better decisions in the future, which, you know, doesn't always happen because you don't always learn. But regardless of what it makes I it do, painful, though, doesn't it? It does. And Knowing... I think that's probably why I'm deeply mentally troubled most of the time, which is probably yeah, involved yeah. in the beer and the, and the marijuana. When it comes to free will, it's like if it is 100% free will, then it's almost like those pains we have to go through are kind of we can only look at ourselves in the mirror and that's a difficult thing it is it? And I, like, I think oh. this is this is like so i think determinism is actually like the safety catch yeah for the human brain so like, ah, don't worry mate there was nothing you could have done she was always gonna leave you anyway you know yeah she you know she wasn't grateful they were always gonna die they, they were always, always die. yeah you know this was always gonna happen this was always gonna happen as soon as you start as soon as you did that you knew this was gonna happen yeah and it's like oh yeah but yeah but you still made the conscious decision to make that but then is that the illusion of freedom yeah and the illusion of free will i think it's a safety catch for the brain because no one likes to blame themselves well it's it's almost like that yeah. only people you ever met that have admitted to doing something wrong very few they want to blame externally so if i broke that table right yeah and you were out for example, I was doing karate, sweet some sweet karate moves, right? <laughs> Watching karate yeah. kid. <laughs> I'm like, and I break the table in two. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, oh shit. Yeah. Well, I didn't think that would work, but it has because I'm fucking super. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking awesome. Because I'm awesome. <laughs> um, then you come back and go, oh my god, Ben, what happened to the table? Well, Sean, every time this guy broke in <laughs> and I, I did this fucking sweet fucking kick to the midsection <laughs> and then crane kicked him yeah. in the face and he fell backwards. He broke the table. Yeah. I turned around to get the kendo stick out, put yeah. the sofa to finish him <laughs> off. Yeah. And he managed to let get out the door. Yeah. And you'd be like, wow, that's amazing. You're okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. But my hand hurts. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lie in your story, though. I know you can't kick to midsection height. Kick to midsection height. <laughs> I've never seen you do that. How many times have you ever seen me kick anything? Never to midsection. <laughs> I sat down. I'd, I be, do I'd be like, show me you kicking midsection first. And you'd be like, oh, I, I think I pulled a hammy. I need yeah. to stretch. Yeah. Maybe next week. It's all them, man. Uh, it's all that squats I was doing earlier. Yeah. I'd be like, there's line number two. You don't do squats. I was squatting earlier. Only because I made you. <laughs> Yeah, I get what you're saying, but with the, the thing is, when you say that, and, I, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm a, a, a determinist, but I am going to argue it's a point just because we're devil's advocate. That's what we do. Um, basically, with that is then you're looking at it negatively. So you're going, well, if my life's shit, it's fine because uh, I can blame it 
on my predetermined future. Yeah. So it's it's like you said, it's like in the brain. It's you you can just blame it on something, something that you can't control, a higher power, whether you say, Oh God did this or the universe did that, or time is just gonna, yeah. you know, I'm going to get old or I'm going yeah. to get sick, or you can always blame something. And like the, in other ways I can't progress yeah. because of society. Because of society. Society's fault. Yeah. And, yeah. And even though you're on that path. Yeah. So oh, society. I'm yeah. not rich enough to make it. I'm not. I'm not. I haven't got this. Without I got that. trying. Yeah. 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 So I, I obviously I'm. You, you, we are. I've said it in different podcasts. I'm all about literally. I, you are what you kind of put into the into anything. The more hard work you put in, the more you get out of it. But I think that there is another argument to determinism that's not so negative. It's the um, when you watch, say, a professional sort of boxer, and he's like, "I'm going to be the greatest ever." And then one day he becomes the greatest ever. But that's forging like, his own destiny. Yes, I know. But what what, he, what I'm saying is, from that, it's like he he believes. You could argue that he believes that um, in free mm. will for that. But it's almost like that's a positive to predetermined destiny because he almost feels like it's his destiny to be the greatest. He's always going to be the greatest. So that's the positive towards but it. Wouldn't that take it away from the achievement? Yes. It, well, I mean, well, like, I'm the best because I train hard. I spar hard. Yeah. I live this training lifestyle like seven yeah. days a week. I am in like the peak condition. I, I yeah. have never been fitter. Yeah. And you, he goes out there and he smashes the fuck out of the guy. He's like one side, three rounds, world champion. Here you go. Yeah. Boom. I don't think it takes and away. If, so, but if he was always meant to be that. Yeah. Doesn't that take away his achievement because he's worked so hard for that goal? I don't think so because it's not it's not like somebody's basically hand like it's not like somebody's flying down like an angel or something and handing him and going look you are going to be the greatest here's a reward for being the greatest it's it's not like that it's going um he he was always going to work harder than everyone else because it was predetermined that he was always going to work harder than anyone else but he still achieved it because it was predetermined that he was going to be the best and he is the best. So it's not that he isn't the best and it's just like it's predetermined that he's going to win all those fights even though he's not the best. He's still the best. It's just it's a predetermined sort of thing. that I think the problem, the reason why people can't get this predetermined thing in their heads, it's such a difficult thing to grasp, is because as, as intellectual beings, we can't see, it, we like to think we can see it, all outcomes, but we physically can't see into the future. So we're like, because we can't see it, it's almost like that's where the saying comes from, isn't it? Seeing is believing. And it's yeah. like, it's like, you, you're a perfect example of that. You're a strict atheist because you're like, well, I don't believe in a God because I can't see it. There's yeah, no evidence. The there's no evidence. There's no proof. I can't see it. And that's the biggest argument with this one of saying, I can't see this future that's written in stone. So how can you prove to me it's real? And it, there could be way more evidence to it. But it's like, well, I feel free and yeah. I feel like I'm making my choices and I can physically see what I feel to be true. Yeah. But, but I, can also, I, I can't see yeah. that future set in stone. But I can also see the consequence of my own choices. Yeah. So, for example, like, let's say Monday morning, I'm going to get up and I'm like, oh, I just have another little quick game on my phone. Yeah. And that makes me miss the bus. Yeah. I know it could make me miss the bus, but yeah. I do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But it was was it? But in this scenario, it was always determined I was going to miss the bus. Yeah. So with that sort of, but then that takes that factor of learned behaviour away. Yeah, and then you could argue then that the third one, which is soft determinism or continuism, I think they called it as well, which is basically where they're saying, well, you were always going to miss that bus. It was just going to be how you were going to miss yeah. that bus. So was it going to be you were going to sit on your phone? Or was it going to be that you tripped on your way to the bus yeah, stop? Or you, you needed fell? to have a last minute shit for your left yeah, nose. Yeah, so there was, you're like, happened before. Yeah, so you go, okay, I don't want to miss the bus. I'm not going to play on my phone. So you get up and then you're like, oh shit, I forgot my cigarettes yeah. or something. I forgot my tobacco. So you're going to go back. You were always going to miss it. And that's what the soft determinism is saying. It doesn't matter what you pick, you do have free will, but you can't control the external. You can't control the eventual. What's going to happen? What's yeah. going to happen? So yeah. it happened the other week. I. Left the house, he was like, Oh, I'm on time. Yeah, I got halfway to the bus stop, realized I wasn't wearing my high visibility jacket. Yeah, had to walk back home and get it. I missed the bus. Yeah, I would have made that bus comfortably. Yeah, but as it was, I walked out the drive, got about 20 meters down the road, and I just saw it sailing off up yeah. the hill. And I was like, Motherfucker, yeah, yeah. It's like that. Um, it's like that great um, Greek philosophy thing. Uh, I think it was he actually said it in the video. Oh, Oedipus. Oedipus. That's it. Yeah. Where the sort of I'll just say it real quick. He was gonna kill his dad, bang his mom. 
Yeah. Wasn't he? That was that was the kind of that was his prophecy. That was his prophecy. So his dad threw him away because he was like, Well, I don't want to get killed and I don't yeah. want my wife being married to my son. So he threw him away, didn't he? Yeah. But then he gets found. He gets found by another family, they raise him, he hears the prophecy, he's like, Oh shit. I don't no, want. he doesn't hear anything about it. He, he does. Know. He does. He, he, he literally, you know, he might. That's why he leaves his parents. Ah. They raise him. He hears the prophecy. He's like, oh, well, I can't have that happen. So oh, he yeah. leaves his mom and dad and he goes traveling. He then bumps into a stranger on the road. They get into an argument. He kills the stranger. Turns out to be his dad. Yeah. He then is traveling into town. He meets a woman. She takes care of him. He finds out that the widow of the man he's just killed. Obviously, he doesn't tell her, falls in love with her, marries her, bangs his mom. Yeah. So it was always. Then he gouges his own eyes out. Yeah. So had he have stayed with his dad, would he have killed him? No, probably not. No, or maybe he would have, because maybe that's his predetermined destiny. But yeah, because he's always got that on his shoulders, like, oh. Yeah. So every day he'd be like, oh, God, I wonder if it's today. Yeah, exactly. So it was always going to be, pre in that determinist sort of argument, that so uh, solid sort of hard determinist, is no matter what they did, it was always going to end that way. But also remember that his culture, yeah. the Greek um, Greeks at the time, the ancient yeah. Greeks, was very much based on the the oracles, yeah. the predictions of the future. This is going to happen. You yeah. need, but yeah. they always offered you a choice in it, usually. Yeah. Um, well, um, the prophecy, they loved the prophecy, the Greeks, and the prophecy fulfilled itself. Boom. Yeah. Look at Star Wars. Oh, even Yoda says, he goes, oh, well, he, Anakin's going to bring balance to the Force. Yeah. He's going to destroy the Sith. And Yoda says, a prophecy that might have been misread, that was, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That is... Yeah, meaning yeah, bring balance to the force. He kills all the fucking Jedi's. Yeah, so he the Jedi are overpowering the Sith, so he balances that out and gets yeah. rid of most of the Jedi. That's it. So it's 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 how you determine that prophecy. But um, that that um show we watched was a great um. I, well, we didn't watch it together, but I know you've watched it. That animated one, the tight with the Titans. What, oh yeah, um, gods and Greeks or something. Yeah, like. um, gods of Gre blood of Zeus. Blood of Zeus. That's it. God, I don't know where I got that from. But um, they, gods and Greeks sounds quite it good. Does look good yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, he goes and speaks to those three oracles, doesn't he? Yeah, the and fate weavers. The fate weavers, yeah. And they say to him, this is your destiny. He said, well, I don't believe. Oh, the fates. The yeah, fates. the fates, yeah. Fates. He said, I believe it. Um, I don't believe in that. I believe in free will. And she, and literally one of them says to him, why can't you have both? <laughs> yeah. Why can't it be a destiny, but you choose how you find that destiny? And that's kind of what soft so determinism is. I can, so you've got multiple destinies. So let's say that uh, I draw my little map again, so sure can see it. And... No, I'd say that so in got, soft I'm determinism, here. you have one destiny, but you have multiple uh, uh, paths to that end. So I am here. There's my path. And then I go, whoop, whoop. Yeah. Like, like a... Like yeah. a big rake, yeah, but branching they, off. Into but they all places. end. They all end to the one. But place. they all end at the one place, which is death. Yeah, yeah. Or greatness, if that's the, the death prophecy. and greatness, yeah. death and glory. So that would be soft determinism. So normal determinism would just be essentially that a straight line. Yeah, yeah. You were always going to follow the path. You, I mean, it could diverge, but it was always part of the yeah. path. It was always predetermined, and then free will means there is no path. You just pick a choice and then that's it on the day. So it's like that new line appears each day sort of thing. Yeah. So, you know, I've got the choice of a garden rake or a single line. Yeah. Well, that's that's the difference between determinism or soft determinism. You, determinism means you, you don't have any choice. It's just this is going to happen. You just don't realize it yet. And then soft determinism is this is going to happen, but you can choose how you get there. And then free will is you're going to choose each day and make a path depending yeah. on each day. So... Ooh, so the garden right. rake or the big stick. So we have those three down. Which one do you think now? Well, I hate the idea of everything being determined. Yeah, you don't like that solid line. I, I am, like am going to be whatever is yeah. determined. Because um, obviously I'm destined for greatness. <laughs> um, but no, I don't. I like. I stick with my my theory even before. Yeah. Every decision I make yeah. is free. Yeah. But the consequences are set. Yeah. So I make the I make the decision to drink ten beers, mm -hmm. knowing full well it will make me have a hangover in the morning. Yeah. But I still do it anyway. Yeah. Now a sensible person. Yeah. If it was predetermined, would go either full on into it yeah. or not do it at all. Yeah. I'm at least going. Mm, well, I've had six. Hmm. Should I have another one? And I'm like, oh, the night is young. I'll yeah. have another. Yeah. And another. Yeah. So I end up drinking them all anyway, knowing, full well knowing that I'm going to be rough. Yeah. But that, there was a choice there at some point not to feel rough. Yeah, but the argument with the determinism would be, did you really choose that? Or was that choice already made? Or am I just a functioning alcoholic? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <clears throat> at the time, we like to kind of 
put thought to action. So I thought, I think about this. That's why I did that. But did the thought come at the time or did it come afterwards? And then our brain make us think that we thought about yeah. it at the time. And it's almost like when we, it's like memories are such a, a fickle thing. It's like when you talk to a friend, they have a different memory of an event than you do. Oh, that's, yeah, well, that's memories. I mean, yeah. yeah. But you can do that with your own brain. I mean, we have conversations sometimes and you forget things and I remember things or we see things as we differently. I think yeah. we did it earlier when we were talking about something. I thought that I'd seen it on a video and you said, I think I told you that. Yeah. So memories are a fickle thing. Then it doesn't matter who was writing oh, that. Gnosticism. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's writing that. It just matters that our memory was different. So, you think that you made that choice, or did you, or did you do that? And or was then that choice just upon me? Yeah. Or or did you did you think about it after you'd already made it, but think you thought about it before? Yeah. Because it happened in the past. So when you're there drinking the beer, did you think, oh, I thought about this and I made this choice earlier, or did it? Did you make that? Did your body make that choice and then you thought about it? That's it. Do I afterwards? think my body's my body's going? Go on, have another. Yeah. My well, my brain's going. Go on. Yeah. Have, with, it's almost like there's a subconscious little voice going, go on, have another. Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is, is with stuff like this, is we always like to think we're better than our kind of lizard brain, don't we? Yeah. So, well, we're evolved, man. Yeah. How many times have you found yourself doing something? You're like, uh, like your phone, for example. This is a perfect example, actually, where you're on your phone and you're like, why am I on my phone? When did I, when did I even pick yeah. that up? And it's like your lizard brain just out of instinct picked it up. Yeah. It, and, and then you're on it and you're like, well, when did I pick this up? And there's probably been times in your life when you'd be like, when did I start doing this? Yeah, and you're just like doing something. Mate, you're I've like, been walking before now. Yeah, with the dog, and I've just been. I've had my headphones on. Yeah, and I haven't been paying attention. I'm like, Where the fuck did I get to Lawley? Which yeah. is like a good five couple of miles down the road. I'm like, where did yeah. I get here? And, and it's I've like, just got literally just gone on instinct. Just yeah, and it's not like paid attention. Did to you make those? Were you thinking about it, and that thought just passed your mind, and you forgot about it, or was that just predetermined that it was always going to happen, and then your thoughts afterwards justify it to you? Like, oh, yeah, we were always going to do that. Yeah. Because the human brain doesn't want to go, well, I'm just acting out something that's already predetermined. So it goes, oh, no, you thought about that earlier. You were always going to do that. Yeah, yeah. So, And that's the problem with the human brain is we think that we're so clever and we're so intricate that we made all of our own decisions. Whereas maybe is the determinist is our brain just panics and goes, oh, you know what? You already made that decision. You were always going to do that to try and justify why you're doing that. Yeah. But that's a scary thought, isn't it? Because it's almost like... Um, it's almost like then nothing is your responsibility. I've just had this amazing theory. What? That your brain, not your brain specifically. Yeah, a brain. A brain is actually running the show behind the scenes, making all the decisions for you, and then just letting you think you've done it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, go on, fuck it, have some beer. You're yeah. an irresponsible guy. Have some beer tonight, fuck yeah. it. And then it's like, yeah, I will. Yeah, oh, that's a great idea. I'm going to... And then he's like, yeah, I did tell you what's going yeah. to happen. Well, we already know yeah. this. We already, we already know this to a certain extent anyway, because when you go into sort of psychology and stuff, there's the id and there's oh, the, ego sub, yeah, and... the ego and all that. So there's already stuff going on in the background. So it's not so ridiculous to think that maybe in the background there's like... The brain's at, what if the brain's its own sentient being in the background? Yeah. And it's literally just projecting this... Piloting a meat sack. Piloting a meat sack, but also giving us this illusion yeah. that we're our own person. Yeah. I mean, and now we're going... Like, like Venom. Yeah. Now we're going into the realm of, like, super philosophical and super out there. But what's to say? Our brain is complete... Like, I watched this video the other day, and they said to map out the human brain, they, they didn't have the technology to do it, but what they've done is they've taken a tiny, tiny piece of a rat's brain and they've scanned it, and it took like hundreds or something, thousands of hours to scan this tiny bit of brain, and it's massive. Yeah. So what's to say that the human brains and the human conscience, conscious doesn't map out entirely exactly the same as the universe, and that we are all just following that that thing, yeah. which is so we're all one collective consciousness. Well, if you look at like pictures of, of that the, they've taken of the universe, it looks like synapses in the yeah. brain. Yeah. What yeah. if the it universe does. is just one massive brain, brain and we're all tiny little brains just orbiting around? Being, this... being told what to do by yeah. the by the hive brain. By so the hive speak. brain. Yeah. Well, I read this article the other day, and it's by you know the big thing that I've shared a few of their things yeah. with you, and they said what happens if the universe is basically conscious or so, some sort of consciousness, and it's or it's acting out its own consciousness. So it is basically a brain and it's just everything that happens is just it acting out its own existence. Yeah. So everything that happens is just part of what it's creating to kind of be conscious. So it's like a brain that's, you know, when you have a, like an imaginary thought yeah. that is like happening within that, the universe's brain. So everything that happens to us is just a, a thought. 
that something something mm. bigger is thinking. Hell. Yeah, but that's like going next level for sort of. I think my brain just actually sort of turned to goo. <laughs> yeah. Is it dribbling at my ears? It feels a bit <laughs> wet. Yeah, but that's going off into a massive tangent. So to go back to where we were, so what would you like to be? I want to make my own decisions. You want a hundred percent free will. Yeah, I want to. I mean, obviously, I know that certain situations will happen from the decisions I have taken. Yeah. The beer argument, the beer example being the best. I know if I drink this, I'll feel like shit tomorrow. Yeah. Well, I know if I drink ten cans, I'll feel like shit. But I'm either going to do it or I'm not. Yeah. But I know the, the end result of yeah. my actions. Yeah. So, so I make the decision myself. Yeah. But then I have a moral responsibility to make sure that the decision is the has the best outcome. Yeah. So you want a hundred percent free will. Do you think you have a hundred percent free will? Oh, that's the question. So, do you, so what? Because you, even that, me saying that, see, the outcome's already predetermined. It's just my decision. Is, so like I make a decision. Yeah. This, yes or no. And this is why. And then that leads me down. Uh, that yeah. leads me to a, a situation which I knew is it's predetermined. It's predetermined. So this is why you. This is why you philo- philosophers that. Are, Free will philosophers struggle with the argument so much because any argument they have is then predetermined because they've made the argument. Yeah. So literally the best argument for free will is we feel free, so why can't we be free? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Freedom isn't free. So where do you think you lie? Where do you think you lie then? So you want free will. Where do you think it, it, it is? I want free will, but I think it's a little bit of both because the decision, my decision, sort of soft determinism. Yeah, soft determinism. My decisions that I make freely. Yeah. Will impact on predetermined outcomes predetermined outcomes yeah yeah so if i make a decision to do something then either let's say i make a decision to go up to a girl and say hey you want to go out some time yeah. right uh, hey baby, uh, <laughs> hey, baby. Uh, hey baby uh sound like johnny bravo that was the idea hey baby, <laughs> hey, baby. um and then she goes fuck off or she goes oh, yes i think we should right? <laughs> that's one of two two options there's only gonna be two options in that isn't yeah there? yeah you know, it's a yes or a no. It's a yes or a no. And then, you know, let's say we, we go up for a couple of days and I go, hey, will you come stop over? And she's going to say yes or no. And if she stops over, she's probably going to have sex with me. Yeah. If she says no, then she wants you to You hope. Win. You hope she will. Probably. <laughs> Stopping over. Depends how good your moves are, I guess. My moves are top class. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what the references say. <laughs> You're like, where'd you keep getting these references yeah, from? <laughs> I've set up like a yell account. It's I'm just a, a picture of you and you've got like two stars. Two, I'm a five star man. <laughs> just, I don't need no damn rating. I'm a five star man. It just goes down one and a half right now. Uh, are you saying that? No. <laughs> and it comes up with a comment from me. He yells too much. <laughs> Impressive penis though. <laughs> Why would I say that? Well, I don't know. You're, I know like, it, you're like, it impresses all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wear great drugs all the time. <laughs> yeah. So what what I, I think is, um, I, I, I'd like to think free will exists, same as you, but um, I, I'm probably soft determinist, same as you, because I do like the idea of free will. Uh, but at the same time, I think that we do have an, an end of eventual. So like, I always think, um, Stalin was always going to be Stalin. Hitler was yeah. always going to be Hitler. There was always going to be um, people of those times that came out as doing great evil, and it was always going to be um, those people with the the sort of right things at the right times, sort of thing. It's worth pointing that Hitler believed in destiny. Yeah, massively. Yeah. Or or even on the good side, so your Martin Luther Kings, your Lincolns. Mm. There was always going to be those people that appeared at those times, and. Um, it was most likely going to be the specific people it was. It's it's not that it's determined that it was going to be those people, but it was determined that in those times those people were going to be needed. So yeah. there was always going to need to be great evil and there was always going to be need to be great good if you believe in evil and good or some sort of con- moral concept that we believe in of it. There was always going to be those parallels. And yeah, I got you. So um, there's a reason why we have great people throughout history. There's a reasons why we know people like Genghis Khan, but that's Napoleon. Like manifest destiny. Then there's always going to be these great people. So yeah, some people are just born to be great. Yeah, basically, they're all they were always going to be great. It was just how they were going to be great. Yeah. It was just like um, would, the, would that be down then to like the right mix of genetics over so many years where they have that you know so many 
so yet so, so close but yet so far not gene, really not, and they all combine into us into a not yes, really gene not really and my, my probably my i know i use him a lot but my biggest argument for him is hitler i mean he was an artist for years yeah how do you go from being an artist to being one of the most powerful and ruthless and arguably evil dictators of all time well that's it but i mean he believed fiercely but, in manifest destiny yeah. i mean He's he, a couple of times during the First World War. Yeah, he could have died. But he was a nerdy painter. How yeah. do you go from that to that? I mean, uh, it was because he was always going to become yeah. the man he became. In, no. And and how he got there was up to him. Mm. That I do believe. I do believe that he was always going to get there. Because how do you how how do you go from artist, quiet, mild mannered artist, to ruthless dictator? Well, rejection after rejection after rejection. Sh- yeah, from Jewish women probably. And art schools. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're painting postcards on the street yeah. hoping to sell them. Eventually you snap. You're gonna don't snap you? one day on you. Like falling down the film. Yeah. yeah. Watched that last night actually. Did you? Fucking good? great movie. Love that movie. So yeah, I do think that we do we do have I think there's a little bit of leeway as well. So yeah. I think that um, yeah, because there's always an unexpected decision that you may make. Yeah, so I, I think it's, that maybe uh, you said this earlier during the um, during the break, and um, I, I'll bring it up because uh, I think you probably forgot about it now. Is you said I think that maybe there's another option, maybe it falls under all three. Yeah, and I thought about that. And I thought well, maybe, but I also thought maybe there is a predetermined destiny, but there's a not so. Well, when I say a morally good or a morally bad, but there's kind of two outcomes yeah. of what you can become and maybe there's three maybe i don't know maybe maybe there's multiple but maybe they're predetermined but um we have a little bit of choice of how we get there so like maybe if he tried really hard and wasn't such an angry man he would have become a famous painter maybe and maybe if um he would have given up on the painting he would have been hitler 10 years earlier yeah maybe he would have been that again. ruthless yeah. yeah maybe if he would have went you know what this painting isn't for me i got rejected fuck it i'm going into politics yeah. rather than trying and trying and then getting into politics he oh just went God, you, just, just like i've done maybe he was like seven years old and his dad went you know what you're art shit and he went you know what dad you're right and he just then he just became hitler yeah. 10 years earlier so i think maybe there's a little bit of leeway either way with maybe which, which kind of but he was always if he hadn't have become hitler he would be this famous famous history history he would have been a famous painter throughout history yeah I gotcha. went off on a bit of a rant then so right. <laughs> it was always it was always going to be great at something sort of thing. Yeah, there was always some plan. Yeah, if that makes sense. So like Genghis Khan, for example, known for taking over a massive amount of land, killing, killing of loads people. of people. Had he not have done that, maybe he would have been known as the guy that fucked like thousands of women. Yeah. <laughs> and had thousands of children. Well, he did that anyway. Yeah, like loads of people uh, now are still genetically um, descendants of Genghis Khan. Yeah, but it's a... not something you learn in history. You learn that that guy fucking attacked and killed millions of people <laughs> and took over mo- like a large portion of the planet he had energy to burn yeah yeah he was he was laying down that pipe on the <laughs> regular <laughs> he was good at fucking yeah he was fucking like 15 women a night yeah he must have been <laughs> i mean but then again i imagine that, that he was just filled with utter testosterone yeah like pure he's, he didn't have blood he just had 100 percent testosterone because yeah. He's a dude riding on horseback, cutting down enemies. He's the best fighter. He's the yeah. king. He's got an empire. I mean, his his dick must have been hard twenty four seven. You know, just just on its own. Yeah. Just like I bet he was knocking against his fucking armored codpiece all the time. <laughs> you like talking about dictators' dicks, don't you? <laughs> well, I'm closing the name. <laughs> and I think on that bombshell, <laughs> probably a good place to finish it. Yeah, name your sex tape. <laughs> Always. Yeah, I think so. I, I um, I think we both kind of. It's not really a debate today because I think we're like we both kind of sit in the middle. Oh, I'm somewhere. just confused as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <To be honest. laughs> I can tell that in the first sort of thirty minutes we did, I was like, I think you got a little confused, and you were like, let's have a look at the notes. <laughs> and you're like, shit, yeah, they kind of all blended into one. <laughs> <laughs> the worst of it is, I have a joint before, after the notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a confusing topic. It definitely is. Yeah. I feel like um, I understand why a lot of philosophers say determinism is the main sort of one they come, the conclusion they come to, because it's just easy, isn't it? I mean, it makes the most sense. It's easy. It's like we are going to become what we are because that's what it's going to be. And yeah. it, 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 it takes all sort of thought out of it then, doesn't it? But I, but I do think that's a safety net for the brain. It's like, yeah, yeah maybe. it feels like you're a bit of a fuck up and all these choices you made. Yeah. 
they haven't led you anywhere. You're doing well, you a could, shit job, you could blah, think... blah, blah, you're unhappy, you're alone. Yeah. And he goes, but, you know, don't worry, it's all determined. It's yeah. faith. But you could also argue that for positive as well. You could be like, oh, I'm going to be great because it's written in time. Mm. You know, I'm going to be, like you said, Hitler believed in destiny. He was always destined to, he didn't know what he was going to be destined for. He just didn't know he'd be destined to be remembered all throughout history. So he is, if you think about it, he's the most famous man of all time. Well, sadly. Sadly, he is. And that's why we bring him up in the podcast, because he's the he's the most evil person we can, everyone knows. We bring him up as, like, a lot of people know Stalin, but a lot of people don't. So... But Darth Vader, he was pretty evil. That's true. That is true. Who's more evil, the Emperor or... Alpha Palpatine or Hitler. Hitler. Palpatine. Yeah, because he just took out a planet. There's like 7 billion people on that. Yeah. So did Darth Vader. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he blew it up right in front of Leia, didn't he? That's right, yeah. 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 And he know. still made it to the light side of the force. I know. How That's, does it, How well, does that how work? How easy is it to get back onto the light side? Because yeah. he, he saved his son at the end. No, it's like well. Catholicism. He said sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. Twat. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Twat, um, thanks for listening. Yeah. You're, you're fried, you yeah. are. Yeah. I'm just like, what? Yeah, yeah. My, my brain might actually short circuit. Yeah, you, you need, need to decompress. Yeah, I need to go and have a joint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, thanks for listening. Uh, we have Patreon, Devil's Advocate, if you want to find that. Yeah. We have Facebook. We don't have many followers at the moment because most people follow Cutting for the Bull, so follow that too. It's all linked. Yeah, it's all linked. Uh, we're on Anchor, Spotify, SoundCloud. On SoundCloud, we're on the, the um, Cutting for the Bull one, aren't we? Yeah. YouTube to follow all those things like us on facebook yeah support us on patreon if you want That'd to be very nice we'd if appreciate that if you guys want to drop us messages you can drop us messages on facebook anchor or on cutting through the ball i think you can on soundcloud as well on the cutting Possibly, through the ball yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. listen yeah. to listen to cutting through the ball listen as well to cutting the ball, yeah. uh, they're pretty good ish all right <laughs> all right they got me in them so obviously they're all right they're all right <laughs> um yeah so yeah. i mean ben thank you very much for listening don't drink the flavor aid. Don't join a cult, but do form a shield wall. <laughs> is that your new one? Is it? <laughs> I may just throw it in again. Form a shield wall. Shield wall. Do you want to tell them why? Because I've been on a bit of a Viking kick. Yeah. You listen know, to all the Viking, Viking. I've been heavy wa- metal, wasn't it? I've been listening to Viking battle metal. Yeah. I've been watching Vikings. I've been listening. I've been watching uh, the Last Kingdom. And you really want to form a shield wall, mate? And uh, I've played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah. So, um, nothing yeah. but Vikings, form a shield wall. Might have to do a Viking podcast at some point, possibly. My, my, my yeah. forebears, yeah. yeah, right. And I've been Sean. Thanks for listening. Don't be a dick. Also, if you're going to go back in time, <laughs> yeah. make sure you, you don't fuck your own mom, yeah. <laughs> like, fucking, what's it? Well, he doesn't fuck her, but he tries to. Um, back to the future, oh, yeah, my Marty my, yeah. tries to fuck his mom. And yeah. if you do go back in time to kill Hitler, yeah, go back as a baby and bash his fucking brains out with a bat. Go back as a baby. And go back with Hitler as a baby. <laughs> yeah, and just bash his fucking brains out with a bat. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? The only way to be sure. They do that in. Um, <laughs> we're meant to be ending the podcast. They do that in um, Future Man. Watch Fu- No, sorry, it's called Future Man, but he's called Future Man. Uh, watch Future Man on um, Amazon. Yeah. In like season two, the the female character she goes back in time to kill Hitler. And she ends up raising him. <laughs> okay. I think it's Hitler anyway. Yeah, I'm sure she... Or, no, it's not Hitler. It's um, it's like the show's equivalent of Hitler. Basically, yeah. this guy that creates this thing that makes like superhumans that are like um, basically like Nazis. They, they believe that they're the perfect race and everyone else is sewer people. Nice. So uh, she goes well, back. In, nice. She goes back in time. He creates this like cure that makes superhumans that like can't have diseases or sickness, or and they they're all attractive and all that kind of crap. Oh, like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes back in time to kill him and ends up raising him and like loving him like her own. <laughs> oh wow! Well. Because it's hard to bash a baby's head in. It is. You know, yeah. I just get a fire extinguisher and sew the little bastard's head in. <laughs> It was for the good of humankind. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Satan I said hello, motherfucker. Yeah. I'll be there soon. I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Please appear. <laughs> You're right, bud. <laughs> right, on that tangent, I think we should probably yeah. call it quits. Yeah. All right, thanks for listening. See ya. Bye.